everybody, it's Lauren Dockett with Psychotherapy Networker and we are coming to you live from Symposium 2019 and with me is Esther Boykin. Welcome Esther. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Esther is a therapist and she's a coach and she has a group practice and on top of all of that, she is out in the community spreading the word about therapy, talking about stigma, um, and really being a voice for the field. Um, now, Esther, I have some questions about how to do this properly. <laughs> so, if a therapist wants to follow your lead and get out there, now, now it does seem like kind of a critical time to be talking about mental health. I think so. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can just kind of go out there randomly, right? So, how do we shape a message um, before we kind of step out the door and share it with the community? So, that's one of my favorite things. I think one of the beautiful things about being a therapist and being in this field is that we each bring our own unique personality and our own sort of, we all have different theories and different clinical perspectives. And so spending some time really getting clear about like, who do you think you, who are you as a therapist? Like what's your professional persona? And then what are your core beliefs about therapy? Why is therapy a good thing for, I was asked, this is something I ask people all the time. Why is therapy good for our communities? Okay. And, and really crafting that message first and then you can think about how do you how do you want to go about sharing that with other people. Now you've also said that self disclosure is a good thing to be doing. But yeah. With therapists, that can get a little bit tricky. So how much self disclosure are we talking about? So obviously within some ethical boundaries. Okay. Um, certainly in the inside the therapy room, but I think in public again, it's about getting clear about what's comfortable for you, and then being clear if I'm out and I'm talking about my life but from a professional perspective, then just like when you're in the therapy room, I ask the question, how do I think this is going to further benefit other people, right? So I might share things about my divorce or about an experience I've had, you know, working with my own therapist, because I think that it is a, there's a universal theme to my personal story. It's not about me just sort of randomly talking about myself. But again, I think it's also, the goal is about making therapy and therapists feel personable mm -hmm. and accessible mm -hmm. and real as mm -hmm. opposed to sort of this secretive, like veiled experience that people sometimes feel about what we do. Yes, exactly. Well, and there are all these different ways to sort of get the message out these days, right? So there's traditional media, there's social media. Um, any advice about how to navigate that realm? What's good, what works, what doesn't matter so much? I think I love that we're kind of in a phase where there are a myriad of options, right? Like you could be writing articles, you could have your own blog, you could do a newsletter, you could be on podcasts, you could have your own podcast. Like there's so many options. And so I think the two main questions I always ask myself and encourage other therapists to ask themselves are, one, what am I comfortable doing, right? right? Like if you, you know, lay awake at night thinking about over every word that you've ever written, like then writing a blog is probably not a good idea, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But if you enjoy talking to people, a podcast might be good, or you are comfortable in front of the camera, then maybe doing Facebook Live videos like this, or doing Instagram Live, or, or even reaching out to your local news is a good option. And then second is, who are the core people that you'd like to reach? I mean, on some level, we all wanna reach everyone, right. but most of us have kind of an audience that we, that really resonates with us, whether it's like, parents of young children, or it's entrepreneurs or professionals, or it's you know millennials and dating, think about where are those people? Where do they go to get their information? Mm -hmm. And then think about how you can show up in some of those places. Okay, that sounds good. And one of the most innovative things I've heard that you're doing, which I'd love to get in, um, is this idea of therapy happy hours, or yes. therapist happy hours. Yes, so okay. I do something called therapy, well, it's an entire division of events, but our core event is therapy is not a dirty word, Q&A happy hours. And so I bring together three to five therapists. We have a legitimate happy hour. There's you know wine and snacks and non-alcoholic drinks. And we invite the community to come in and just, just like you would at any other happy hour or networking event, come in and talk to us. I think it really helps to make therapists feel more personable. And again, that ex accessibility of therapists, that we can talk about what we do without talking about our clients. Mm -hmm. These are all really good suggestions. Thank you, yes. Esther, so much. And Esther will be here at Symposium presenting um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, and stay, uh, stay tuned to Facebook. We'll be doing more Facebook Lives throughout the show.